Saving seed is one of the important jobs of autumn. I mean, there are other times of the year too where seed is ready to be saved, but autumn is particularly the time where crops are coming to the end and the seed is ready to harvest. Now seed saving has been a critical part of gardening throughout history. If you think about it, we only really have a lot of these varieties and plants that we grow as food because people have selected and carefully kept seeds and developed them across time. Plants grown in a location repeatedly will acclimatize to a certain degree and so that means that keeping your own seed is quite a valuable step and if you keep it over quite a few years you'll progressively get a plant that is better suited to your environment. Now for me I have three primary things that I need to uh, keep at this stage of the year. Uh, one of them is these beans. I have kept this seed now going myself for three or four years since I actually purchased the original seed. And look, with these beans it's a really simple process because it's simply a matter of allowing some of them to develop to maturity and dry on the vine. Here in Tasmania the autumn weather has generally a reasonable number of nice dry sunny days like today and at one of these days you can simply harvest these dry beans and put them somewhere dry and away from vermin. Now I've actually found that they keep quite well in the pod like this you don't have to open them up but you can it's your choice as long as it is dry it has to be completely dry if there's any moisture in it still uh, and you put it in a container it is of course going to rot and affect your seed quality so do make sure it is dry but this blue lake climber I can keep going really really easily and enjoy it from year to year the other two seeds that I am keeping at this stage the gardener's delight tomato and the cucumber which was muncher because both of those while it's the first time I've grown them this year I found them to be really good varieties and I want to keep them going keeping cucumber and particularly tomato seed is a little bit more complex than bean seed in saving cucumber seed I generally just cut open a cucumber that I've allowed to mature well on the vine and scrape out the seed to begin the process Tomatoes, you can do much the same thing. Uh, with these little cherry tomatoes, it's quite easy because you can simply squeeze them out. If you were using a larger tomato, of course, you would want to cut it open and scrape out the seeds, similar to what I was doing with the cucumbers. Now, with seeds that have gel around them, the germination is enhanced by allowing the seed to ferment for a few days. So once they've fermented, usually around about four or five days, then add some water and basically pour off that excess. And fairly quickly you'll see that the fermentation process has removed most of the gel. It does it really well with the tomato seed. You see how the water is very quickly becoming clear. And once strained, you're going to have just the seed without that casing which that gel casing around the seed inhibits the germination and so it will germinate at any time much easier without that gel coating there spread it out on a piece of paper so that it can dry and it needs to dry thoroughly before you put it into any storage the cucumber seed I also fermented, uh, it comes up with quite a pungent smell after uh, about four days. It didn't remove all of the gel but the majority of it was removed and uh, I believe this will still germinate quite well. It will probably require a little bit more drying, take a little bit longer. I dried the seeds inside and at room temperature. Ensure that they are thoroughly dry before adding them to any type of container. There is, however, another way of preserving your seed and keeping it going, which is even more simple. And that's allow seeds to actually 
broadcast themselves and become you might say wild in your garden now I've done that in my garden with parsnips and also lettuce I have one or two actually two varieties of lettuce that are now wild in my garden and I simply look for when they come up in the spring move the plants around to where I actually want them to be and then allow some of them to go to seed and spread their seed themselves I found this to be one of the most successful ways of keeping those varieties going the parsnips also parsnip is so critical in terms of the seed being fresh that I've actually found it more successful simply to allow a few parsnips to go to seed and then weed out the ones that I don't want to grow my resulting crop has actually been really really good now one of the easiest of seeds to actually keep is the pumpkin seed or squash depending on which country you're in uh, what is a squash in one country is a pumpkin in another and what's a pumpkin in another country is a squash in another so I'm going to call it a pumpkin because that's what we tend to call them in Australia if you think of it as squash fine but because these seeds are big and you can just pull them out put them aside to dry they're really really easy to keep because of that people will often give you some pumpkin seeds and say oh this came out of a really beautiful pumpkin try this one and I'm always reluctant to do so because home gardeners particularly often grow multiple uh, varieties of pumpkin in the one garden and because they open pollinate they can cross and create hybrids very very easily so that that means the seeds that you plant will not always be the same as the pumpkin that it came out of and sometimes the pumpkin that it came out of was in itself a first hybrid and is going to vary dramatically recently I began to understand more about the pumpkin species and how you can actually avoid this cross-pollination problem unfortunately I didn't learn it early enough this year I grew in my garden as my primary pumpkin this one which was small sugar and what I also grew was zucchinis now you might not tend to think of this as a zucchini most zucchinis are long this is actually just a round one but it is still a zucchini or in other countries you will call it a courgette this of course is a mature one not the ones that you're used to eating now what I didn't realize at the time and wasn't careful enough to consider was that the zucchini and the small sugar is actually the same species of pumpkin they're both people they're a different variety but within the same species of pumpkin and that means that they will cross pollinate very easily if I was to keep these seeds all these I'd potentially have something different to what I actually have grown so it's really not worthwhile me keeping these seeds I have store of zucchini seed from the previous year and I will grow from those uh, they should still have reasonable viability with these I've decided not to grow these probably again next year because I found that they're not keeping very well some of them have within them fungus sort of growing from the inside which is sending them rotten so not a good keeper and while they produced really well and grew really well in our short season they're not going to be uh, good and also the fact that I want to grow zucchinis and I would like to be able to keep my seed so growing those two would create an ongoing and continuing problem so the solution is to grow a different species of pumpkin if you're growing zucchinis grow your pumpkins from a different species now this particular pumpkin here came to from my nephew's garden and it is a hybrid variety but it comes from Maxima now I won't keep seeds from it because it's from a hybrid variety but there are non-hybrid Maxima species pumpkins as well so that if you want to keep seed from them and you want to grow zucchinis grow zucchini which is pipo and also grow another species of pumpkins such as Maxima or one of the others there is as say about four varieties sorry four species of pumpkins that you can choose from doing that and growing only one variety in your garden will allow you to keep the seed and keep it 
pure and ongoing. If you grow more than one variety, like as I say many home gardeners do, then you won't be able to keep those seeds and keep them consistent because they'll continue to vary, especially if they're within the same species. Now you could grow different pumpkins, but as long as the species is different, which you're actually doing here if you grew these and these, these are actually all cucurbita, what you might call a pumpkin, but because the species is different, they won't cross pollinate. So something to consider when you go to say pumpkin seed is, yeah, how have they been grown? What have they been grown with? And will they produce a consistent result.